tomatoes. They're the king of our vegetable garden and they're something that we can eat year round, but when we eat one fresh from the garden, we realize the taste is completely different than that from the store-bought. Now, we have to choose from a lot of different varieties and a lot of times people ask, how do you choose which variety of tomato to plant? So first of all, we've got flavor. When you're choosing a tomato variety based off of flavor, if you read the description either on the plant label or in the seed catalogs, they can read like a wine description and it might be hard to choose which variety based off of that description. I would encourage you to try a new variety in your garden each year, but if that sounds like a little bit more effort than what you want to do, you might visit a farmer's market where they tend to have a little bit more selection in the tomato varieties that are available to you. And you could sample some of their hard work before you go into growing your own varieties. That's a great way to kind of figure out which might be your favorite tomato. The second thing you want to think about is the function of the plant. Are you looking for one that is going to be a giant slicing tomato, a perfect addition to that hamburger or the sandwich in the summertime? If you are, then one you might want to consider is Brandywine. It's a great tomato that is a nice slicing tomato. We also have beef steak, which is another large slicing tomato. Now there's another thing you might want to think about if you want a cherry tomato. Some people like to walk through the garden and kind of nibble on some of their produce as they're going through. Sweet 100 is a great option for that, as well as Sun Gold, which is a yellow small cherry tomato. Now keep in mind, when you have more fruit, you're going to have more labor having to pick those off. But they're a nice colorful addition to any summer salad. There are also certain tomato varieties that are better suited if you're going to cook with them. Uh, Roma, Milano, and Amish paste are all better if you're going to make a tomato paste or tomato salsa out of these, or tomato sauce. So you might want to look for those varieties if you're planning on cooking with the tomato. The next thing you want to think about is the location in which you're going to plant your tomatoes. If you're in an urban situation and maybe you only have a patio garden and looking for something to stay a little bit smaller, you might look for a determinate tomato. And it'll say that on the label or also known as a bush tomato. Celebrity is a great example of that and that means that as a determinate tomato it's only going to grow to a certain height. Now it also means that it'll only produce so much fruit on it as well. Some of your other tomatoes are what are known as indeterminate, and these are going to be more your vining tomatoes. Again, they should say that in the catalog description or on the tag des description, whether it is determinate or indeterminate. Now, when you get these that are more of a vining tomato, keep in mind you're going to need to provide them with more structural support and staking to help hold up that plant but they'll continue to produce all season long for you as long as the environmental conditions are right. The other thing to think about is disease resistance. If you look on the label or again in the plant catalog, it should have some letters and numbers, and that means it has some disease resistance built into the plant. You can see here it says VF1, F2, NTAST, and that means that it has resistance to verticillium wilt, falsarium wilt, races one and two, nematode wilt, tobacco mosaic virus, alternaria stem canker, as well as gray leaf spot. So this plant is gonna be more resistant to diseases that you might encounter. And really the best uh, thing to do with some of those diseases that we face is to be proactive and get a disease resistant plant. But if you're not concerned about that, then you can go with some of the others that may not have that resistance built in. So why does a store-bought tomato taste so much different than a homegrown tomato? Well, it basically has to do with a lot of these factors that we've discussed. Typically, a commercially grown tomato factors in the disease resistance, also the ability for that produce to be transported long distance, and the aesthetics of that produce when it's sitting in the store. I mean, we all learned at an early age that a tomato is supposed to be red, or is it? I know some people that would argue some of their best tasting tomatoes aren't red. In fact, they might be striped, orange, yellow, or even green. This season, I'd encourage you to get out into the nursery and try some different varieties of tomatoes, or perhaps check out some of the produce at your local farmer's market. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. 
You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.